Hey everybody, this is Mark Richards, the owner of Wasatch Recovery and a proud sponsor of Todd Sylvester's Belief Cast. We are excited to have you join us as we discuss Wasatch Recovery's unique treatment programs for overcoming addictions and techniques for developing a healthier lifestyle. We call this the Wasatch Way. Wasatch Recovery's goal is to instill hope, teach resilience, and help you achieve recovery. Enjoy today's podcast. We are back. This is Todd Sylvester with the Todd Inspires Belief Cast with another edition of the Wasatch Way. This has been a huge success for us. We've had a lot of people reach out and tell us thanks for talking about treatment and some of these issues that we deal with each and every day. Also inspiring people to get help for their loved ones. And Mark, you've been fantastic about being vulnerable about your position here as owner of Wasatch Recovery. And that's who I'm joined with today is Mark Richards. He's the owner and one of the best owners that I know in the industry because of how he treats people and just that he's engaged each and every day. So, Mark, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, no, I love doing these with you. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of subjects we've already covered, but there's a few things that we were going to talk about today. We were just going to talk about maybe some of the things you see and why clients who come here initially, why they're successful versus maybe the ones that aren't. And I'm sure there's a lot of things we could talk about, but maybe we could narrow it down to maybe maybe the top three in your mind, what you think really makes someone successful in treatment. I love it. I love it. We, uh, you know, you get so many people that come to treatment, um, but ironically, there's very few people that get to come to treatment. Yeah. It's, it, it's a, it's what's a, the percentage of that? Do you know, 1% of people across wow. the nation ever get the opportunity to go to treatment. And that's just such a terrible one out number. of 10 people who need it. Yeah. One out oh. of a hundred or one out of a hundred, one okay. out of a hundred people yeah. who need treatment, Dang. get the opportunity. And that's the first thing that I look at is, and I always say that is the opportunity because it really is an opportunity Yeah, for anybody to come to treatment. Yeah. And it's interesting when you say opportunity, most people who come here, I don't know if they view it at first, at least that this is an opportunity. It's almost like, oh, geez. Right. Why am I here? Do I want to be here? That kind of thing. Yeah. I'm dreading <laughs> this situation. And I think that's normal to to feel that you've either never been to rehab and you've, uh, yeah. you know, conjured up this thing in your mind of what rehab is or you've been to a certain place that maybe wasn't fit for you. Right. And so now you have this, you know, preconceived notion of what all rehabs are. <laughs> and <Right. laughs> uh, so I, I totally get it. Um, but what an opportunity, what an opportunity to be able to come and take some time yeah. in this crazy world we live in and just be within yourself. Yeah. Think about the, uh, anyone listening to this right now, whether you struggle with addiction or not, wouldn't it be great to just pause your life just for a few days, 30, 60, 90 days, and just, like you said, just be and work on you. You know, we call this a life program often, right? Yeah. You know, university, you know, that kind of thing. And so, yeah, what a what a great thing it is once they kind of get to that point. So what would you say, Mark, in your mind, are the reasons why someone is successful when they come to treatment and when they leave well, first of all, I think when somebody finally gets the courage to come to treatment, mm -hmm. the first step is obviously they have got to surrender. Surrender. Yeah. I mean, they've got to surrender. Yeah. And I know we hear that in different areas of treatment. We hear that word often in yeah. treatment. You've got to surrender. You know, in, in an AA program, you're surrendering. Yep. If you're in any type of program, surrendering is important. And it, it makes perfect sense in my mind yeah. because what you're doing currently is not working. <laughs> <laughs> right. So if there's any chance, you've got to surrender to the process, if nothing else. If you're going to go to a particular place, I don't care what place it is, yeah. you got to surrender to the process. Yeah. Yeah, that and what does that look like in your mind? You know, someone listening to this might be okay. He says surrender. What does that mean? Because I think some people might not understand fully what that looks like. Well, in my eyes, I, what that means is is okay. I've made the commitment. 
Mm-hmm. I've made the commitment to get here. I've worked so hard to get here. You know, I've watched people, they go through detox. They've, they've, you know, lived through hell for a couple of weeks just to get themselves here. Yeah. And then they forget to come and really surrender to the program. Yeah. And if you don't, if you don't do that, um, then it's very difficult. But what it looks like to me is you, you come in the door and you've made that commitment. And as anybody who's successful knows, partial commitments don't work. Yeah. Right. And yep. we often talk about here that even a 99% commitment doesn't work in, in this field. Right. Unfortunately. Yeah. We talk about the 1% yeah. will win over the 99% effort that you give you have to give a hundred percent. Well, I love that. In order to surrender fully. In my yeah, opinion. and I agree with that. And I think I would add, you know, because when you go to a program, we have certain rules you have to follow. We have all kinds of programming going on, all things you got to do. There's things we expect. I mean, Mark, you're one of the, I think one of the only owners, if not the only one, that will sit the client down and say, "What are your goals? Why are you here?" You know, and how are you going to achieve that? You actually literally have them write these things down, and they're just sitting there going, what, "Who is this guy?" Right? Well, he's the owner. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I well, love that. Well, and I love that because it sets an expectation right yeah. up front. Hey, you're here for a reason. Yeah. You're not here to just float. You're not here to just have a good meal for a couple of days. You might be yeah. living on the streets right now, but yeah, if you don't do something, you're going to go right back out and be on the streets. You're going to be using it again in no time. And so I love to have that conversation yeah. and really get their brains started immediately. Yeah. You know, why am I here? Yeah. What is my goal for this? And, you know, a lot of people up front will say, well, my goal is, is to get clean. And I go, well, that's great. Yeah. You know, that's a good goal to start. Yeah. But by the end, if we don't have a goal set for where you're headed in the future, you're, we're in trouble. Yeah. You know, and you're in trouble because yeah. you're not going to go anywhere. Yep. So. Well, and that's one of the things our clients who come to Wasatch have to surrender to is sitting down with you and having this conversation, <laughs> right? You know, because it is a tough one because a lot of them don't have, they don't know, they're not sure. You know, uh, one of our, you know, uh, therapists in our equine, uh, D, he he describes surrendering as coming coming over to the winning side. I love that, and that's really what you're doing when you walk in the doors of Wasatch. You are opening up and you're coming over to the winning side of life. Absolutely. Isn't that cool? And it really is evident in people who commit and Mm -hmm. who surrender to the process. And it's hard. And it's, it's difficult on their emotional state. You know, when you first come in, you don't want to feel emotions. You're, you're struggling so hard with shame, with guilt, with all these different emotions that you hate to feel. Probably the reason why you're using. Right. And... Now you're forced to feel, and that's what the process is meant to do is make you feel. And that's what we talk about is this is a life program. This isn't just getting rid of drugs and alcohol, but if you can't feel anything, there's a problem. Yeah. Wow. I love that. So surrender is a big deal. Again, coming over to the winning side. What would you think the second one uh, is? You know, once you do that, I think the second thing is, is you got to work hard. Yeah. And working hard is vital. So surrendering to the program, mm-hmm. you know, when somebody comes into Wasatch, they have to do yoga. <laughs> and, you know, you got the yogis that come in and they go, oh, this is awesome. You know, I get yeah. to do yoga. <laughs> and then you got the ranchers and you got the attorneys and you got yeah. these guys not to label anybody specific. But I, I laugh, but they're like, yoga you want me to do yoga (laughs) and uh it's it's hilarious because it really puts them out of their comfort zone yeah and so (laughs) yes i want you to do yoga because it teaches you to live within yourself mindfulness there's a purpose for every piece of the program but on top of that not only do i want you to do yoga i want you to work hard at doing yoga yeah and i want you to work hard at getting vulnerable and I want you to work hard at group. And frankly, I want you to give 110%. I don't want you to give a hundred percent. I want you to give you 110%. Yeah. And that's difficult. Yeah. You know, you shared a quote with all of us at lunch, um, about choose your heart basically. And, and if you got that, I'd I, love you to read it because I would love to read it. Cause you, you basically, the premise of this is life, life is hard. It really is. doesn't mean it's bad. 
It just means life is hard in so many different directions. So do you mind sharing that quote? Yeah, no, I would love to. I just, I saw this on the internet. My wife actually sent it to me and I thought it was so profound. And it, it is, it's profound. It, it says marriage is hard. Divorce is hard. Choose your hard. It says obesity is hard. Being fit is hard. Choose your hard. Being in debt is hard. Being financially disciplined is hard. Choose your hard. Communication is hard. Not communicating is hard. Choose your hard. Life will never be easy. It will always be hard. But we can choose our hard. Choose wisely. Wow. And I just love that. <laughs> I just think that is so true. Yeah, man. Life's not easy yeah. for anybody. Yeah. You know, we get a lot of people who come in here and they feel bad for themselves. And frankly, it's because they've just fallen into this victim stance of their circumstances are harder yeah. than the rest of the world. Yeah. Where it's really not. It's yeah. just in a different area. Right. Yep. Yeah. I love that. Cause I think I say this a lot, like energy can't be destroyed. And if I'm putting my energy towards all this negativity, it's hard, right? Living on the streets, doing drugs, oh. blowing up your relationships, having debt hanging over your head, criminal charges, going to court. That's hard. <laughs> right. That's <really> free. <laughs> sounds really hard to me. Sounds so hard. But then when they shift that energy in the other direction, Getting clean can be hard. You know, changing your mindset and your belief systems, it's hard. You know, coming to treatment for 90 days, it's hard. But, you know, choose your hard. Right. Right. One brings you actually, you know, happiness and joy. The other one brings misery and pain. But they're both hard. Right. I'd rather lean towards the, you know, the positive. But I know I've been there too back in the day where I'd lean more towards the negative because you're comfortable with it. But, uh, again, I love that quote. And I appreciate you sharing that. No, yeah. I love I love that quote. Um life is hard and we got to work hard. And that's the goal is to work hard. Mm -hmm. I watch you Todd, you know, and what you do on a daily basis is, is amazing to me. It's not easy mm -hmm. to be able to sit with people, to be yeah. able to listen to problems, to be able to reframe their thinking and to be able to inspire them to be better is not always easy. Right. You know, you have to prepare yourself mm -hmm. every single time you meet with somebody. Yep. You got a different personality. You got a different <laughs> sex. Yeah. You got, you got somebody sitting there that you have to mentally and physically go, I am important right now in this person's yeah. life. Yeah. And that's not easy. That's a huge burden. It is. You got to be on. But right? what a challenge. It is. Yeah. And, and and how great is it to have that heart in your life? Yeah. I mean, nothing to me would bring me more happiness. Yeah. No, I love that. Thanks for sharing that. But yeah, I, you know, um, it's it's almost like second nature at this point, but it's because I put in the work to get to that point, if 100%. that makes sense. And it was really difficult to get to this point, but I'm glad that I put in the work. Right. And I'm still learning and I'm still trying to be better and I still will, you know, I'll hey, keep doing it. Right. You just ran a Spartan race last weekend. <laughs> you know, I, I sit there and go, that's hard. Yeah. There's not a chance I'm running that Spartan race. I'm looking at your Instagram and I'm like, nope, yeah. this isn't for me because yeah. I'm a wuss. <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest. I'm like, you're no the, way. You're the strongest wuss I know. <laughs> <laughs> Without being able to yeah. run a hundred yards these days, oh, I feel man. like you know? I'll tell you. Well, you know what's interesting? You say that the Spartan um, was the most difficult thing I've ever done, I, and I know it's it's a big thing to say because I've been through a lot. I've been I've been through drug addiction, right. not, but mentally and physically to do that in a hundred degree weather, it was it was truly. As I crossed the finish line, I got emotional because I thought I can do anything I put my mind to, you know. And it was really one of those moments where I was like, man, it's amazing what we can do if we if we just stick to it. Oh, we can. You and, know? and we can all do it. Yeah. That's the thing. Right. Is, is it's been proven. It's been proven that we are all capable yeah. of anything we want to do. It's just how hard are we willing to work for it. Yeah. Well, and if you guys will remember our last episode is, you know, we always do what we want. Right. You know? And, um, and again, I think it goes down to back to that quote, choose your heart it comes down. What do you want? Yeah. What do you really want? Yeah. What do you want? And one, you know, it's going to change is hard. That's why a lot of people don't come to treatment. Yeah. They're like, Ooh, that's hard. But again, homeless, you know, having the cops after you, parents disappointed, family disappointed. That's hard. That is hard. No, it's, it's all hard. Yeah. And, uh, and, but that's what's so great. Yeah. And, uh, 
what I love about the hard is the result. Yeah. Is when you put in the hard work, the results will come. Yep. It's not maybe will come. Yeah. It will come. Yep. And it's just the challenge of working hard enough to get the result. Yeah. And that's that's what I love yeah. about it. You know, I always say the universe or God or whatever your higher power may be, whoever's listening, has no favorites. It will give to you exactly what you justly earn. And if if you come into treatment and you half ass it, you're gonna get a half ass result. And and that's no one's fault, particularly, you know, it's like right, but if you put in the work like you said, Mark, you will get the result you came here for. Right. It's pretty amazing. Well, it's been proven over and over and over again at this point with Wasatch. Yeah. The people who come in and grasp the concept mm-hmm. and will take all the advice and do something different yep. and work at it. It is guaranteed to work. Yeah. It's it's guaranteed. Yep. And I hate when people say that almost. Yeah. But it is. Yeah. But it's just how hard are you willing to work? Yep. How much of a commitment are you willing to make? Yeah. And so yeah. that's really, in my opinion, that's the second most important thing is you've got to work so hard. Yeah. Okay, so we've talked about surrender, hard work. Let's, let's, what's the third one, would you say, that keeps people successful uh, during and after treatment? You know, I've always heard, and if it's in athletics, if it's in business, if it's in your personal life with families, whatever it is, I think the third thing for me would be is you've got to stay consistent. Mm. Consistency is so important in life. And, uh, you know, there's people who question your actions and there's people who question who you are and they wonder, you know, who is this? And they don't ever get a chance to know you. But when you're consistent, it's okay Yeah. because you know you. And if you continue to stay consistent on a daily basis, you should be okay. Yeah. You know, obviously, if you're consistently doing something wrong, you're not going to be okay. Yeah. But if you're, if you're consistent in that hard work, in doing your program, in whatever it may be, yeah. again, in your business. Yeah. I can tell everybody, if you're just consistent, you're going to do good work. You're going to do good. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it goes both ways, right? You can be consistent in doing the wrong thing. Right. And that's what most people, before they come into treatment, they've been doing the wrong things, right? Whether it's their fault or not their fault, they've been going down this wrong path, but they do it consistently, and that's why nothing changes. Right. Right? It's the old cliche <laughs> definition, insanity. You <laughs> yeah. know, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. Mm, yeah. Well, if you're consistent in the wrong way, you can't expect a different result. Yeah. If you're consistent in a good way, you shouldn't expect a different result. You should expect to benefit from what you're doing, Yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Well, and th- like you said, when you start seeing results, that's when you start feeling the energy and the passion and the love and like, man, I really can do this. Right. And again, it's think of those simple principles, surrender, hard work, consistency. Right. There it is. There's the formula. It is. It's, it's a great formula. I mean, you could add all these other sub principles to it, but that it, when it comes right down to it, I, I, you know, you've been doing this a long time. I've been doing this a long time. That is it. Yeah. I mean, I got to give you props again because you're the most consistent person I know. (laughs) And that's what's made you who you are. Mm -hmm. That is why you're so inspiring, not only to the world, but to me. Um, Mm, I watch you. I watch your discipline. I watch how you do things. And frankly, I get jealous at times because I do. I look at you, Todd, and I go, this guy's the most consistent human being I know. (laughs) And I love that because I do. I watch you and there's no different. There's no different. It's always the guy I know, (laughs) you know, and that's what I love because I don't ever have to question. I just know you. I I know you because you're so stinking consistent. It's like going to McDonald's. I'm going to get the same (laughs) cheeseburger every time I go. Right. Yeah. Same fries. It's that whole, it's that whole mentality of doing the same thing over and over and over until you become the best of the best. And, uh, it's the same in our field. It's the same here at Wasatch Recovery. When you come to Wasatch, you know what you're going to get. Yeah. 
and we are very consistent here, and that's what I love about this place. Absolutely, I agree. Our therapists, down to even our all the way down to our line staff, and the things that we do here, we're very consistent. Uh, we don't apologize for how we do things here. A lot of people may not fully agree with how we do things, but again, not that we don't care. But you know, we're going to do what works, and sure. we're going to we're going to do a program that's going to make you realize that you can actually change your life. Absolutely, hundred percent. Right? I had a girl come in from California the other day, and I took her to lunch and was speaking mm -hmm. to her. And uh, she had been a part of this field down in California for the last seven years. She's yeah. been clean for seven years. Okay. And uh, and I said to her, I said, you know, at Wasatch we do a few things against the grain. And I said, one thing you'll find is Todd believes that you can be recovered. And she looked at me, and I said, have you ever heard that before? And she goes, no, but I'm recovered. And I said, right? I said, you don't have to wear a scarlet letter on your back yeah. and be in recovery the rest of your life. Yeah. And she said, brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. And I said, right? Yeah. I said, why carry that scarlet letter? You don't yeah. have to, you know, you're wise. Yeah. You're wise from your experiences. Quit carrying a scarlet letter like it's something wow. bad. Yeah. You know? Love that. And uh, <laughs> that's what I love so much, you yeah. know, is, is we, we do things a little different here. Yeah. Well, and again, it's freeing, and it's a, it's a it's an amazing belief system that's true, and people will if they'll just embrace that they can actually move on from this part of their life. I always go back to anyone I talk to about this is f when did you start using? You know, typical typical answers like thirteen, fourteen, fifteen years old. Well, why can't you define yourself with, from zero to fifteen? Right. I mean, isn't that who you really are? You weren't born an addict. You weren't born anxious or depressed or anything. So that's you. And then obviously, you know, drugs and alcohol get introduced into your life. And then it becomes this coping mechanism. And then, and then you get clean. And then what you do for the rest of your life is define yourself with that period of your life. Right. Why can't we define ourselves with the first 15 years of our life? Because isn't that really who you are? And that's, that's the point. I'm not trying to deny that it's a very difficult thing to overcome. Sure. But come on, people. Why can't we think in that way? So, yeah. Wow, that's, that's a little tangent so there, but man. no, I love I love <laughs> the tangent, Toddy. It's just it, it's so true, and again, it's probably a little bit against the grain of what people hear in sure. this situation. Yeah, and but you can you can be that person that mm -hmm. was before you ever used a drug. Why yeah. not? Yeah, it's it's that was part of you. Yeah. Why can't it still be you? Yeah. And, totally. you know, that's where you're so good is changing that narrative in their head. Yeah. And, uh, you know, these, these principles are, they're not always easy to live by, but it's very simple. Yeah. It's simple, but not very easy. It's hard. It's yep. hard work. Yeah. So. Well, it was funny. We were talking about, we we're going to maybe come up with some things that may cause someone to not be successful in treatment. And we just said, well, it's just the opposite of those three. <laughs> you don't surrender, you don't put in the work and you're not consistent. Right. <laughs> and that's really what it comes down to. And people who come off the street and they're coming into treatment, they're not consistently doing the right thing. And it's interesting, like, you know, just like the, we talked to this, one of our clients that walked in, and he says, yeah, this is really hard with all these rules here. I'm not used to rules. And my first my first thought is to run. Yeah. We're like, and the rules aren't hard. He's just not used to rules. <laughs> right. Right? Any rules. So, but it's just funny how it's just the opposite of those three. If you don't do those three, you probably won't do very well. Right. Right? It is true. And not just in treatment, in life in general, I think. Oh, I 100% right? agree. Yeah. 100% agree with you. Yeah. Um, anything else you'd like to add, Mark, from your perspective on just anyone listening to this that... You well, know, I just again, I think ultimately, if you if you put that all in a nutshell, if if you take all three of those points and put them in a nutshell, it goes right back to the commitment. Mm -hmm. it goes right back yeah. to the commitment of the whole situation, and I think that's where we all struggle. Is commitment is hard, and if you make that commitment, you're going to be successful, which then translates into happiness. Mm -hmm and joy yeah. and that's what we're looking for we know we can teach you about drugs and alcohol we know we can teach you about other things in life but ultimately that's why we're a life program is we want you to be happy yeah we know how to get you to that point to be happy yeah now 
can you take it and take that advice and right move along with it and stay consistent in those <laughs> principles yeah which are life principles yeah again it's not just for addicts we teach just simple life principles yep i mean every one of those principles a lot apply in every area of our lives absolutely and uh and i just think that you know we can we can do so well if we if we just think of those three things yep perfect well i'm gonna maybe end with a quote and then we'll um turn it over to you to let people know how they can get a hold of you and get into our program if they want to love it so this quote i shared with our uh clients this morning in mindfulness and it's by james allen out of his book the pathway to heaven and this quote is about heaven and hell and it's not about religion it's more about the heaven and hell we create in our heads so i shared this and i thought it was very profound i love it here's how it goes and it's kind of a long one so i'll read it really slow so we understand troubles belong to hell they do not enter heaven this is so simple it should not appear strange if you have trouble, it is in your own mind and nowhere else. You make it. It is not made for you. It is not in your task. It is not in the outward thing. You are its creator, and it derives its life from you only. Look upon your difficulties as lessons to be learned, as aids to spiritual growth, and lo, they are difficulties no longer. This is one of the pathways up to heaven. I love James it. Allen. Love it. And how simple that is and how powerful and profound. And I say this all the time that really the co the number one cause of human suffering is our own thinking, you know, around this kind of stuff. And so if a lot of times when people come in here, they can't get control the way they think. And it's just it's burdened them in such a way. And so that's one of those things that we really help people overcome as well as they come through the doors here. But uh, but yeah, good stuff today, Mark. Good principles, life changing. Um if people want to reach out to you, Mark, and uh, know more about our program, maybe come up and do a tour or just even chat with you about some maybe some options, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, there's a couple different ways. Um, obviously, you can go to our website, which is wasatchrecovery.com. Okay. Um, you can call our main line, which will ring to a number of us, which you should be able to get through most of the time, if not all the time. Yeah. And that number is 801-901-0024. And then if you feel like you want to talk to me, you're welcome to call me on my personal number at any time. That's 801-898-7778. And uh, again, don't hesitate. Uh, if somebody feels you're ready, if you have questions, Feel free to call, and yeah, uh, we it. would we would love to help. And uh, yeah. if if this isn't the correct place, we'll help you find the best place. Yeah, um, we're great at advice, and uh, we're just here to help those who are in need. So we'd love to have you call, and yeah. uh, don't don't hesitate. Yeah, I love it. And we'll put all that information in the show notes, so you'll have it right there at the touch of your finger. And uh, yeah, Mark, thanks for taking time once again for the Wasatch Way. I love doing these with you. You and I both. <laughs> I, I think it's I think it's fantastic. Yeah, this is good times. And so there you go, guys. Uh, another Wasatch Way episode. Please share this with people you may know that might be struggling, whether it's a mental health issue or addiction or just struggling overall. And this would be a good way to break the ice with them, like I always say. And then reach out to Mark. Check him out. He's, he's one of the few owners that gives out his personal number. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, guys. Yeah. So please reach out to him. And if, if you're not sure if this is the place, come take a tour and just kind of check us out and we'll help you out. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. And we love you guys. And Mark, once again, thanks for being just a, a great individual. And great, it's great to work for you. Nah, you're sure welcome. It, it, it truly is an opportunity to be here with you. It's also an opportunity for people to be able to come here. So yeah, I encourage everybody to just call them. They have that urge. Okay, love it. All right, everyone. Love you guys. Thank until next time.